Hello, everybody. It's so Walter, the So Walter Jones Show. I am he. It is Sunday, 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 Sunday night, the evening edition. Baby. Uh, today's date is um, it's May. I do know that. May 21st, 2017. Good evening to all of you out there in radio and TV and social media land. I am starting a new series called My Favorite Person of the Week. Mm -hmm. Getting ready to kick off. And my favorite person of the week is going to be who? My Facebook friends. That's right. One of y'all, once a week for the entire year, is going to be my favorite Facebook friend. Mm -hmm. It's going to be uh, either on a Sunday night, I'm going to post your picture and what I think of you mm -hmm. on Sunday nights. I might do it Monday. I can't remember which one I'm on. I don't know which one, but my favorite person of the week, Facebook friend, that is, of the week. So if you're not my Facebook friend, you try to get in while you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I, I see one right now that I'm going to feature, uh, like, real soon. I want to talk about the brags. Y'all brag too much about nothing. Nothing. It don't mean nothing. A hill of beans. Nobody's impressed. Now, it appears that the people are impressed, but it does nothing for them. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let me help y'all out on this, okay? I'm going to try my best not to go long because I've been in church for six hours today. Literally. Six hours in church. All right. All right. All right. How, how do I do this without um, kind of peeing off some people here on there? All right. So you go ahead and hit the share button because I'm getting ready to go there. Um... Have you been talking to somebody, whether it was at church, whether it's on the job, whether it's on social media, and these folks, hey, Miracle Miracle, these folks keep dropping names. I know so-and-so, I know so-and-so, I know so-and-so, I done been around the world, yeah, 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 okay? I'm tired of it. It don't do nothing for me whatsoever. I could care less how many um, uh, stamps... You got on that piece of paper that allow you to go you know, to Europe and South Africa and Asia and the Caribous, okay? I could care less how many hands you shook. I don't care how many people you recorded with in the studio. I don't care if you was the first bass player, keyboard player for the six tops, even though there's only four of them. I don't care who. You are, whether you've been to Spain or Ain, okay? Whether you were Saint or Ain, I don't care if you was the lead drummer for the R. Kelly band, Phase 3. It don't do me no good. It, it, I don't give two dead flies what you done done in life. You ain't don't need to impress me. Okay, see, because when y'all doing all that bragging on social media and telling everybody what you've done done, you trying to present something, okay? You, you've you already did things, okay? So you've arrived already. So why would you got to spread it all over the place what you've done done? People already know mostly what you've done done in life. So do you do you have to continue to try to prove who you are? Is there something going on inside of you? Do you need an intervention? Is there a medicine that you need to take? Is there, are you tittering, tottering on depression or something and you just need somebody to celebrate you? Because I think some of y'all are in, y'all are in, y'all are narcissistic, some of you, that every time we talk to you, you got to drop names. How many times have you hear me drop anybody's name. A lot of y'all don't even know what I've done in life professionally. I don't tell it. I don't tell it. I don't tell folk how I blessed this person, how I paid this and paid that, paid that. I don't say, hey, get on this thing. Hey, now you tell me what I did for you. Go ahead, baby. Tell them, tell them what I did for you. You will never, 
ever in the history of not never hear me bring people up and say, hey, tell them what I did. Tell them I paid your, your college tuition off. Tell them I, I don't do it. The people do it for me. They say, Walter did this for me. But they volunteer that information. I never tell them. Matter of fact, when they be telling folks that, I get a little nervous. Like, ooh, I don't, I don't need that kind of grandeur stuff. All right? I'm sitting with one kidney over here. I don't even, I got one kidney. Why? Because I gave the other sucker away to a dying man. But you would rarely hear me talk about that stuff. I don't do it. I just don't. Okay, because I don't think it's necessary that I got to always be in your face telling y'all everything that I done done in life. Now, if there's a job that I want, I'm going to do a resume and give it to him. But I'm not going to post my resume for all y'all to see. You ain't offering me no job. You see, the Sir Walter Jones show is a show based off of my life. It's really what it is. It's based off of my life. And many of you know my life and my struggles uh, and, and my heart, my soul is out there to you. But much of it is not braggadocious <coughs> because men <coughs> don't talk about their pain. <coughs> I do. Men don't expose themselves and be trans. They're not really transparent. I am. That's why people tune into the show to hear about my transparencies. Not all of the places I don't travel around the world, okay? I'm just, matter of fact, I failed more than I succeeded. I went to high school and failed, failed, failed. I refused to go to class. I'm like, I ain't, I'm not even waking up today. I'm going to hide in the basement. For four years, I just, I skirted through that. Fail, fail, fail. Okay, went to college, fail, fail, fail. You see what I'm saying? And I'd have been in and out of studios. I'd have, I'd, I'd traveled here. I'd have, I'd have built. I, I created men's and women's cre uh, their their careers. Okay, I birthed these minstrels. All right, but I don't talk about it. You don't even know who they are. But when they come on stage, when they, they'll say, that man right there did so, so, and so for me. Why? Because the Bible is clear. But don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. They're not even supposed to meet. They shouldn't even be, they, they should not shouldn't be talking. They're just supposed to be talk, just, just giving each other hands, high five. You're supposed to wake up in the morning, your hands go bam. All right, that's it. But they're not supposed to be talking to each other. The, the right hand I supposed to be telling my left hand that he was scratching me last night because I had this itch. I was itching for a scratch. And so he said, listen, listen, guess what I did with Walter last night? You wasn't around, but here's what I did. He had an itch, mm -hmm, and I scratched him all night long. He loved me more than he loved you. He do. Yes, he does. Not supposed to. Don't let them know what each other's doing. You stand. The Bible was the loser. Folks standing on the temple right there on the stairs. Talking about using big words, okay? It, it call it vain dangling, the Bible calls it. And you just a chatterbox and you speaking stuff and you don't even know what it means because you're trying to prove to the people that you have arrived. You ain't got to do none of that. Folks, a lot of folks didn't even know I studied pre-law. That was my major in school at Bethune-Cookman College. I enrolled as a major as a pre-law student. Me. I didn't go there for to major in music. I came out of there as a music man, <laughs> but I went there for pre-law. I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be the, the Johnny Cochran's. I wanted to be the guy standing in the courts. That was me. That was my dream. And I put a suit on every day in high school. And I went down there to the law offices and interviewed lawyers because that's what I wanted to do. That's your first time hearing me say that, right? I'm trying to tell y'all, I don't tell y'all stuff about me because that ain't important. But all oh, when I talk to some of y'all, y'all got to always drop all these names and, and it just drive me up the wall. Now, if I need for to introduce myself to you one time, because there's something that I need to do, which is called vet. I need to vet myself or qualify myself for you because you need me to do something, but you don't think I'm adequate enough because you don't know about me. So I'm going to tell you some things that I've done. That's fine. I'll do that for you. Okay. 
because you may need that so now we can sit down and have a conversation, all right? So I probably need to do that. So I get that. I understand that. But every time we sit down, I got to tell you what I, I can't do it. I got now, I got a video about my life that I put up for my students who, who are starving artists who want to know how to make it in the, in the business, how to be good entrepreneurs. So I had to put up a biographical sketch of myself. That's fine. I talked about where I come up and who I've traveled with and helped. That's fine in that video for my students. But that's for my students, okay? But that ain't for everybody. To, it just drives me up the wall. Okay, and I'm be seeing these face my musician friends especially y'all are bad with this. Y'all are horrible with this. Y'all I'm telling you, you need to humble yourself just a little bit more. You need a little more Jesus because I could care less if you are a gospel artist or you a gospel musician playing for the churches. The churches done raised you up when you was a little big head boy with snot coming out your nose and saliva. You couldn't breathe because the boogers was climbing up in your nose and you sit on the piano playing chopsticks. Clink, 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 clink. Okay, and we like, oh, let a little boo-boo play, let a little boo-boo play. And then somebody came in and showed you some better chords, showed you a more perfect way, and then you done come up and you learn how to clean your nose, okay? You know, you knew how to, they, we, they taught you how to blow the boogers out your nose, and you got a little bigger and bigger, and then you began to play, and skillfully, and then everybody rallied around you, started pushing up these little boy wonders, okay? Little boy wonders, and everybody celebrating them. Ain't nobody sitting them down, though, trying to tell them, okay, here's what's getting ready to happen to you, and let me take this, uh, this head shrinker um, tool to make sure your head can stay strong Okay, because if they keep celebrating you like this, you're going to turn out to be a monster. And so that's what we've been doing. We take these little boys, these little prodigies, and man, we're blowing their heads up. And they come up and they come up and come up, come up, okay? And then what happens is the world grab them, all right? These artists. You turn on BET. You turn on the, the Grammys, the, the Emmys. You, you turn on the, the, the Oscars. You turn on the American Music Award. You, you turn on the Hip Hop Award. You turn on any award show you're going to see in that musician's pit gospel musicians. They're going to be coming from the Church of God in Christ especially. First, they're going to grab them because those, they're, they are the best musicians in the world. Kojic musicians, and then they're going to grab these guys from the full gospel, these Pentecostal musicians, and then these Baptist musicians. They're going to grab them up, and they're going to travel the world with these secular artists. You don't impress me as a gospel artist who come up under this church from the South who was raised up on holiness. You're going to try to impress me because you travel around with Beyonce and Snoop Dogg and, and the rest, okay? How they going to impress me when you're a church musician? I ain't telling you you can't go out there and travel with those guys. I ain't the one. If that's going to make your money, boo-boo, get your $2,000, $3,000 a week. I don't care. If you got your mortgage, your rent, your car note, and your baby need pass shoes, plus you need a light bill too. And if R. Kelly say, I need you to come and grind with me on the stage and play those six C-sharp chords, by all means, boo-boo, go ahead and have a way at it. Do your thing and make your little papers, okay? Go ahead. But don't be coming back to me talking about who you play for out there in the world. How that going to impress me when I'm, I'm, my thing is gospel, okay? I listen to some secular music and I'm very choicy at the style that I listen to. I love me some jazz, some on B, okay? Uh, depending on what it is, okay? The lyric form, the beat, the beat, the tempo, all this stuff. I listen to orchestra music. So I listen to, gosh, all kind of music, okay? But you won't see me on stage with the boys saying, ain't nothing wrong with a little bump and grind and I'm back there playing behind them. Ooh, but, and then Sunday, I'm sitting there on that ain't me. I ain't telling you you can't do it. I'm just telling you I ain't going to do it. And I'm not going to go to my gospel friends and tell them, yeah, I just got through playing bump and grind the night before. Uh, celebrate me. No, I will not. No, nah, never. You won't see me doing that. So you ain't impressing me by how many Grammy Awards you got. 
that's not impressing the people. Mm -hmm. It ain't helping them. Because here's the thing. Go ahead. Let other people celebrate you. You ain't got to do it. I got my gospel musician friends here who traveled the world and wrote some of the greatest songs out there. I celebrate them. But when I see them doing it, celebrating themselves, I say, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I, just, I, got, I can't take it no more. Delete. Mm, block. Turn the computer off. I don't want to see that. You shouldn't have to do all of that. People, they celebrate you. They know what you're worth. You shouldn't have to tell them and, and push who you are in people's faces. You shouldn't have to do that. People, and, and then here's the thing. What it does is the people who are struggling in their craft, in their gift, in their talents, in their callings, okay? They're struggling and they want to hand up. They want somebody to help them. While you over here bragging about what you have accomplished and all that stuff, how is it helping these people over here? Because they're like, okay, that's fine, that's nice, that's cute. But who going to give me a hand up? Who going to help me come up like you did? Who going to blow my nose? <sighs> I got boogers, okay, up in my nose too, snot and foam, and I'm trying to play these chords ta -ta 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 -ta, like you did 20 years ago. Who going to help me? So what you do is, you musicians out there, y'all hoard over your chords like you invented the C-sharp minor 13 to the 4th power. You say, you, you hoarding, you, you, you covering up the chords like a fat man covering up his food because he don't want to give no food to a, a man who is hungry. That's what you all, y'all do this. Y'all play these fancy chords in church and everybody go, woo, wow, woo. And y'all play these chords and then somebody, this poor boy over here, want to learn how to play. He got some prodigy in him. He got, he know, at least he knows the chord structure a little bit. And he come on and say, can you help me? you like, I ain't got time. And you grab your little sissy purse, and then you go to the next gig. And I'm getting tired of this. I'm I'm outright. I'm indignant. I'm tired of it. And y'all are driving me up the whizzizzle. Though that's a French for wall. Okay, check Google. I, I, they be lying if that ain't in there. Okay, it drives me crazy when you says you that big, you that important. Well, you can't take these poor starving artists out here who's waiting for somebody to build them up and help them. You too busy over here bragging on Facebook Live how many people you done done, you done travel with, you done done this, you know that ain't helping nobody but yourself. Am I done ranting and raving? Because it's driving me crazy. There's only a couple men that I know who, uh, who have given back. Percy Beatty is one of the ones that I know who have given back to those. Percy, all right? Grammy Award winner a few times. I've wrote, wrote many of the famous songs that y'all know from BB and CC and the Thompson Community Singles, what have you. But guess what he does? Every now and then, he gives back. He do classes for who? Little guys. Little guys like me. Okay? Men like those, I celebrate them. When I see what they're doing, I say, y'all go check him out. Why? Because he might be up here, but when he among us, guess what he does? He lowers himself. And he's, he's like one of us. You think he you think he was nobody. Because he shakes hands with us and he laughs and have a great time. He don't even talk about music a lot of times. Percy Beatty. Okay? He, yes, Percy get, does get back. Miracle says he's an amazing brother. Those kind of men need to be celebrated. All right? But these other cats I be seeing on social media, they record themselves at church. Oh, Lord, am I getting ready to get in trouble? I'm getting ready to get in trouble. I'm getting ready to get in trouble. I'm getting... I'm getting ready. To, how many times did I say that? I'm getting ready to get in trouble. Okay? Hear what y'all do, musicians. I'm really tired. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Okay? You never, ever, in the history of Facebook Live everism, see me take my phone or iPad and put it in front on top of the organ or piano and I'm playing on the Sunday morning and all you're doing is watching my face. You never see me do that ever you have never and i have hundreds of videos go on youtube go on facebook and look at all my hundreds of videos not a one will you find me on sunday morning high worship with my phone and me playing the organ and i'm just looking at the screen looking at y'all okay never why because 
to me, that's self. To me. All right? I know I'm going to get in trouble for this. I see the negative numbers right there. I see the thumbs down. To me, you and yourself. Okay? Now, if somebody else is filming me, I, I nothing I can do. Sometimes I'm playing, and boom, I look around, and there's, there's videos. Okay, I didn't tell them to do that. <clears throat> okay? Or if I'm up there preaching the sermon, and then I'll give them my phone. says, the people need to hear the word of God. I'll record that. But... Me sitting here. Now, imagine me at church on, the, on 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, okay? And here's my piano. You can't see the piano. You can't see the organ. You can hear it, but this is what you see. That's all you see. It's, it's, a, it's a, like a circus to me. And you just, you're just looking at the video every now and then, and you look and see who's, who's watching you, and you, you notice some, some people watching you, and you just get to, now you're jamming. Can't nobody see your fingers. All they can do is hear it. And you just, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you and yourself. You need some self-medicine. You like that uh, Zoloft commercial with the white, the, the little cloud, that little white thing with the cloud just with the face. Always looking sad, you know, and just, just following the depressed person around. Zoloft, that, is that the commercial? You into yourself and you need to go to self.com, all right? And get you some self help because that just don't make sense to me. It don't. Who was it edifying? It's just putting you on on spot, okay? Uh, uh, um, Mister Cecil DeMille, um, what's my line? That's what it is, okay? Uh, bring the camera over here. I'm getting ready to play. I want the people to see me worship. Look at anybody in there yet? Look at me. I'm playing. Look, mom, I'm dancing. I'm dancing. I can't do it, y'all. I can't do it. That's why you will never see me do it. All right? You brag too much about nothing. And God is sitting there wondering, is he storing up treasures in heaven? Or is he storing up treasures for just his house? And that's it. Because you ain't, it ain't benefiting the kingdom whatsoever. It ain't doing nothing, 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 nothing. Joe Hill, I need some coffee. Yes, I do. I can't, I can't, I can't do it. Abronia, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't. All right? So people, people, pe people, let the people say it. All right? If I'm playing an organ, I'm talking to you musicians out there, and somebody is filming me, that's cool. I, I can't do nothing about that. All right? What I will do, though, I'll do my evening manner. After service, people leave. And then what I used to do is have the man film me play because that's evening manner. I'm playing a hymn now specifically for you. Worship is done corporately with my church. Now I'm playing for that audience and we are worshiping together. And I'm doing my evening manner, which I would have usually been doing right now. But when we're in high worship at, at my church at 11 o'clock, that's my time with, my, with the members of, of my church and with God. That's our time, high worship. And if I want to bring you into that worship, then I will film the whole setting. But I'm not going to put my thing on the table there and play the organ and let you look at me like this. And then I'm scrolling up. That's a distraction and you into yourself. Now, I know I got in trouble with a whole lot of musicians out there. But guess what? I got a I don't care ministry. How many times I got to tell y'all that? I don't care dot org dot net. Okay? I don't really give a care. Uh, dot org, I think it is. Okay? We don't care. We get we get hate mail all the time, all right. We 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 get thumbs down on YouTube all the time. And when they call me Negro and and, and they don't say Negro, they say the other word and coon and, and all this stuff. I say uh, thank you. Can I have another? <laughs> oh, they call me all kinds of stuff because they disagree with me. I don't care. Oh, I said that already, didn't I? All right. Please, people, as I shut this down, stop bragging. You ain't humble. You need to you need to go back, do your first work. Go back. Humble yourself. Cause we didn't raise up too many of these these so-called boy and girl wonders who played a couple notes, but because they were the age that they are, y'all drove them up there and I call it uh what's his name? Um, um what's his name? Going round in circles. 
what's the artist's name? They did an unsung on him. Billy, Billy, Billy Preston. <clears throat> Billy Preston was seen playing the organ with Nat King Cole. You go to YouTube and there he is playing I Found My Thrill. Okay, he might have been about 13 years old. Okay, <clears throat> and I saw that and I said, wow, that, look at that. I didn't even know they had video of him that young. <clears throat> well, somebody at the church, who was a deacon, molested that boy. Okay, and that molestation caused him for the rest of his life to struggle. Lord have mercy. Okay, and y'all are celebrating these little boys, okay, who can play like that at that age. But what you're not doing is you're not fathering them. You're not mothering them because if you did, <clears throat> we wouldn't have that kind of those kind of things that happen to these these young boys and girls in our ministries. They've got places now where they they got homes now where they got a sign that they put on the front lawn of houses where there's sex offenders. <clears throat> and some cities will put a put a sign in the lawn and say this house is a sex offender's house. It don't matter who lives there? If there's people who live there, five, six people can live in that house, don't matter. Because one guy is a sex offender, they got to put a sign there. If a guy moving to an apartment building, they got to put a sign in front of the building that says, sex offender live here, be careful kids. You know where the next place they probably need to put the sign? In front of some of y'all's churches. Ooh, I'm in trouble. Ooh, I got to go into hiding. Ooh, I'm going to need a, a, some kind of witness protection. I'm trying to tell y'all. Some of our churches need a sign right there. Plap. This, this place right here is a place where a lot of sexual molestations go on in the boiler room, in the bathroom, in the basement. All right, or in the loft up there in the attic of this church right here, put a sign there because there's a whole lot of Billy Preston cases that come out of the churches. I'm gonna tell y'all this that's why you better follow these little boys and girls down into the bathroom. Y'all up there praising God, traveling shoe, Lord, got on my travel. Oh, that little boy is on his way to the bathroom downstairs. Guess who's either down there already waiting on that boy or who saw him on his way out and followed him while y'all travel shoes, Lord, got on. And the ushers back there, they, don't, they ain't paying no attention. They're too busy digging in. I don't know what's going on, okay? And they go down there to the bathroom and they have their way with that little boy or that little girl. And... Then they threaten that little boy, little girl, don't say nothing or I'm going to kill your mama, your daddy, and your whole family. And now this kid is frightened for many years. And this man keeps taking that boy down there Sunday after Sunday. And you are none the wiser because you're driving the shoe, love, God, okay? And y'all need to follow these boys and girls down there to the back. You take them there or you make them pee at your house. And when you get to the church, you say, now you come up here to the front. You can't be, you just can't, you just, when we were coming up, we were not allowed to go over to anybody's house, especially not for dinner and not for no sleepovers. My parents didn't play that mess. Didn't do it. They said, well, who's the parent? I want to talk to them. My father said, put them on the phone. Who are they? Where do they live? How long are you going to be over there? And no, you can't sleep over there. I'm trying to tell y'all, y'all better y'all better supervise these. So what we do, these little organ, bass player, drum player, they're coming up and we're celebrating them. Woo -woo, and then we start taking them all over the place. And before you know it, somebody out there going to grab them because they, they still weak in the mind. All right. And then before you know it, Billy Preston. Okay. Because Billy struggled all his life. And, and he tried to, to, um, Squash it by drinking alcohol and taking drugs. Okay, y'all go to Unsung. Uh, that the episode is probably on YouTube. The Billy Preston story will make you weep. You hear me? And he died. Okay, he died as a result of a man molesting him when he was a teenager. It took him that long for it to finally catch up to him, and he died because of that. You can save these people. You can save these little boys and girls. All right. Because I'm telling you, when I was the prodigy, ain't nobody really talked to me. I was a mess. 
Man, I was laying, I was sowing seed all over the place. And I ain't talking about some putting money in the offering. I was sowing other kinds of seeds, okay? I'm trying to tell y'all, because then nobody sit my black little skinny behind down and say, listen, little boy, everybody watching you, they like the way you play that saxophone. They like the way you play that, 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 that pan, is that the pan? Yeah, they like the way you play. You sure can play that piano. But let me tell you, Kimmy, sit down, little boy. Let me talk to you. Okay? You see them little girls over there? They they like what you doing. And uh they want to get in your little draws, okay? They wanna they want to play they wanna hear that song, um, um My Dingaling, okay, by um what's this guy, okay? Yeah, they wanna hear that song. Can you play that song? I know this is too much for y'all. I know you y'all are probably too young to hear this kind of conversation. I get it, but that's really a song. It's called "My Dingaling" by the what's his name? Uh, uh, well, he did now. He just died a few weeks ago. Okay, I'm telling y'all, that's the conversations that didn't come my way until it was too late. But now, when I talk to these little boys, now, ooh, you best believe, Sir Walter, Uncle Wally. Uncle Sir, because I got all those names, or Papa. I said, sit down, little boy. Sit down, little girl. Let me tell you what they didn't tell me. I found out the hard way. Don't go in that room there. Don't go to that church right there. Okay? And when you get to playing that little thing right there, leave. Get out of there real quick. Grab your uncle. Grab your mom and daddy. Get out right now. Okay? Them two little girls right there, they ain't no good. Okay? They ain't up to nothing. Get out. Don't even shake their hands. Get away from them. Let me tell you, go before the Lord. Get in your Bible, okay? Uh, go get. Go to school. Stay in school. All this stuff. Thank you, uh, Deatrice. Uh, that's Chuck Berry. Mm -hmm. That Chuck Berry song. Uh-huh. My ding -a -ling. I remember when I was about, I don't know, 15 years old. Am I telling all my secrets? I was in my room and I heard that song and I said, man, He's uh, he wants to play with my dangling, <clears throat> my dangling. I was just fifteen, I think I was. And I might no, I must have been younger than that. I might have been eleven, okay. And I'm in the room with my brother Rodney. He ain't here now. I don't think he is. <clears throat> uh huh. And I'm in the room with my dangling, my dangling, my dangling. You know how black folk make gospel like anything. And my mother and father was in the living room. We were living on Albany Street here in Chicago. And I'm singing the my dangling song. And uh, I'm just having a great time with it. Mm hmm. And my brother Rodney left the room. And I said, oh, then I'm going to sing it louder. My dingling, my dingling. And then uh, my brother Rodney finally came back to the room. I mean, it's funny to me now. It wasn't funny then, though. And my brother Rodney said, Walter, yeah, my mom and dad got a question. I, I said, what? It says, um, when you get through playing with your dingling, dinner is ready. <laughs> I said, oh! They heard me singing. You, you was loud. And mama mama wanted to know, are you really playing with your dingling? Okay. <laughs> now, that's my mama, Evelyn Jones. She might sign on in a minute. So let me stop. Okay. It's, uh, when you get through playing with it, dinner is ready. But wash your hands thoroughly is what they said. And now, Rodney may not remember that story. But why is it that I'm 50, 51 and I can remember this 40 years ago? Okay. Man, I'm trying to tell y'all, this thing is real. Brothers, sisters, stop bragging on everything you do in life. We don't care no more. We could care less. How was it helping me? How was it benefiting me? You see, because the fivefold ministry, the apostles, the evangelists, the prophets, the pastors, teachers, those gifts that Christ gave when he come up was for the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body. And that fivefold don't spend time bragging. When they, If they do brag, they're bragging on the goodness of the Lord and not themselves. Why can't you be like that? When you're going to go forth in a Facebook Live or a... Um, or, 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 or a, a Pandora, uh, what, what's it called? What's that other thing y'all abandoned? Okay, with the P, or with iTunes, not iTunes, um, the Twitter owns. That that place over there, okay? And when y'all go all these lives, Instagram live and all this stuff, and y'all talking about the stuff you do, if it ain't edifying the body, if it ain't perfecting the people, if you're not 
teaching a class, stop bragging. Because it ain't doing nothing for nobody's career. There's some people out there who, uh, who have a gift and they're being stifled in their gifts. Okay, Periscope. Thank you, Shante. They're being stifled in their gifts. They, had, they go to church every Sunday and some of them are elders like me. Y'all see the rope, okay? And they don't get a chance to preach. Okay? They don't get a chance to preach. <clears throat> they, they, every Sunday they go to church and they wonder, when is my time? Their missionary is sitting there. They don't do nothing. Their deacon is sitting there. They don't really do nothing. There are people sitting in the audience who's got a ministry. All right, who's God has given them the ability to lay hands on people, gave them the ability to, to intercede for people. They gave them the ability uh, to give, to speak word of knowledge and word of wisdom, okay, and to interpret tongues and all that stuff. Operating, all the operations of the gifts are up in your church, but in many cases, it's stifled. Why? Because the, the same ones are being used at the pulpit. Same soloists, same musicians, same preachers. Same ones, all right? So they sit in the audience, twirling the thumbs, wondering, man, uh, and they, they sit on the gifts, okay? But I don't know why they forgot that the church house ain't the only place where you, you operate in your gifts. I, I just don't understand why doctors would, uh, would, would, would go to school all those years, pay all those thousands of dollars in loans, okay, and then look at each other and, and try to operate on each other, okay, let, let, me, let me look at your eyes, okay, two dentists looking at each other's teeth, okay, and all these people out there uh, with rotten teeth and, and it's falling out and they need dentures and these doctors here looking at each other and you got cancer and, and high blood, low blood folks are hanging around and you ain't doing nothing, that's what the church is, y'all are pretty much high-fiving each other and a sick world is at your door, Okay, so all these elders are sitting there on the front row waiting on Pastor uh, 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 Fellow, Pastor Othello, I'm sorry because he got his degree now, so he's Pastor Othello, all right, and we're sitting there on the front row waiting on our time to preach because that guy preached, why can't I preach? And he just slayed the people. I want to slay the people. Well, what you doing Monday through Saturday? Nothing. I just go to work and go home and eat food and go to bed. That's it? You ain't one nobody? You ain't preach not one? One sermon to your next door neighbor at least you ain't you just say do the people on your job know that you're elder i mean do you do facebook lives you got an opportunity to preach to the world right here free of charge <clears throat> you won't do it but you're waiting on sunday morning for a pastor to call you <clears throat> so that you can give a word from the lord to the same people who are not sick they're supposed to be well jesus said it is not the well that seek a physician. Ooh, I'm getting in trouble. So what are y'all doing Monday through Saturday? There's a whole lot of places that you can do. I've talked to some people who said, I told them volunteer. Well, I don't know where to volunteer. I don't trust these places. What do you mean you don't trust these places? You giving excuses. Well, I don't want to do. I don't want to do this. Uh, this cancer thing because <clears throat> where the money is going to. Okay, I get that because in many cases, a lot of these little cancer things, a lot of the money goes to a more of an administrative cost than it do to the the victim. <clears throat> I get that. But there's so many other places you can volunteer at Blue. Is it what is it? Red Cross. Okay, and when when Katrina hit down there in New Orleans. Okay, I went straight to. Um, um, Red Cross. I did. I says, now these people, I can't get to New Orleans, but what was happening was they were shipping people from New Orleans out of town it over to Texas, uh, Alabama area. Some was shipped to Florida, and some was, shipped to, was shipping, they were shipping thousands to South Dakota, and we had to meet them. And these churches got together and says, we got to welcome these people. We don't care whether they're black, white, Hispanic, it don't matter. We got to take them in. <clears throat> so what I did was I went down there to the Red Cross and volunteered, and they, they gave me a, a class <clears throat> on how to help people. Got my little, my little car, and we was waiting for those people to come. There are so many things you can do to volunteer. There's so many uh, orphanages that you pass by, you don't even know it's an orphanage. There's so many 
uh, homeless shelters for men, and then the women's shelters right across the street. There's a food depository in your town. Uh, there, there's soup kitchens everywhere. Some of these churches have these pantries, okay? You, you, there's so many things. You can even give blood, okay? If you're healthy enough, you can give blood for people who need blood, all right? Trust me, whether you A or B or zero and positive or O negative, it don't matter. Somebody needs your blood. There's so many things you can do. But no, what we do, we sit in our churches and wait for our turn while the world is dying. And that's why the church is weak. Because you're too busy sitting in, in to, inside of a temple, waiting on your turn. And God says, I didn't call you to the temple. I called you out of the temple. <clears throat> I can't. I'm, I, let me stop. <clears throat> you're bragging. It's all, it's all about you. Okay? I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I've written over 2,000 songs, okay? And many of them, most of them, you will never hear. A lot of my close friends have heard them, and they say, oh, my God, that's one of the greatest songs I've ever heard. And I say, well, that song right there ain't for the world. That's for me, maybe you right now because you heard it, but that's between me and God. Some of the greatest songs I think I've ever written was just between me and God because that's my time with him. I ain't going to be bragging on everything I've done done. I ain't going to do it. And God won't let me do it. He's calling on the humble. God gives uh, grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. All right? And so if you one of them proud folks, God is resisting you. Okay? Get yourself right. Stop bragging. All right? And if you don't understand what I'm saying and you just tuned in, go back and rewind this tape. All right, and see exactly what I'm saying. It's okay to spotlight what you do every now and then because you want the people to buy your records. You're going on iTunes. Trust me, I'm getting ready to put my stuff on iTunes too. I've got my master's class and stuff like that. I'm getting ready to put that out and I have to promote it and market it properly. So of course I got to properly vet myself. I got to let the people know what, why am I qualified to teach these classes. Of course, that's all in, in the marketing material. Okay, but that's only geared to that class, all right? But I'm not going to go on Facebook every day that I've been seeing y'all do. And then what happens is you don't engage with the people. You put up this nice little fancy little playing your thing on the, on this thing. And the people are coming and they, they're responding. They're hitting the like button, hitting the share button, and they're commenting. And you won't say nothing. You won't even say thank you. You won't even recognize the people who... Who are admiring you? That's what I'm seeing in a lot of you gospel musicians. Now that right there can make a man cuss. Thank God he didn't save me because I sometimes want to just cuss at you. Okay, I'm tired. When I do my evening manners, hundreds of people come by. Okay, and they listen to me play. And most times, I give almost everybody who comments a voice. Do I not do that, people? I'll turn to my iPad because I, I'm looking at y'all over here. Because sometimes I can't see you right there because it's small. So I, I turn you on right here. I'm looking at me. Look at me. Hey, me, how you doing? You good? Good. You doing all right? I'm good. He sure is fine, ain't he? Okay? And I look at y'all's comments and I read what you're saying. Y'all know I'll stop in the middle of my rant and read what y'all saying. Why? Because my listeners are more important to me than a lot of times what I'm doing. I'll be playing my leaving manners and I'll turn to the comments and say, oh, oh, and I'll start reading what you're saying because you, without you, I'm just a man looking at nothing. What they say, a man, a, a, a leader without followers is just a man taking a walk. And I don't want to be that guy just out there taking a walk, calling myself a leader. Ain't nobody following you. So, you're important. It's like opening a business. When you open a business, they tell you that the customer is always right. Because without the customer, you wouldn't have a job. I couldn't pay you $10 an hour. And I can't make no money because ain't nobody coming here to buy nothing. All right? So the people who are watching you are important. So if you're going to, musicians, put up these videos of you playing somewhere in Europe, what have you, and they're giving you their time and commenting and hitting the like button, do them a favor and say thank you at least. 
hit the like button or something. I go the extra mile. I at least say something. I engage in a conversation with these people. I don't even know these people. I've never met them before in my life. But you best believe many of the people who follow me on Facebook, they if they act like we've known each other for 30 years. Why? Because I treat them like my own family. Because they took the audacity to take out their time to watch me at 11.24 p.m. on a Sunday night when these many of you have got to wake up in the morning early to get stuck in traffic to go to work and you sitting here watching me? You important. You best believe I'm going to give you the time of day. I'm going to inbox you, tell you thank you. I'm going to tell you I'm going to support you. That's the way it is. A lot of times I take my own money and fly to y'all's towns. This is stuff I don't tell y'all, okay, because I don't believe in all that bragging. But I get on the airplane with my own money, buy plane tickets to come to your town. Why? Because you have supported me with your encouraging words, with your prayers, and with your comments and likes and shares. Oh, I'm coming to your town. And God blesses me to do that. And when I come to your town, I'll find all the Facebook friends that's in your town, and we come together and have a dinner or lunch or something. Why? Because... Y'all important to me. So you musicians who are out there got all these followers. You ain't nothing without these people. You ain't nothing. So give them the time of day. <clears throat> Spend some time. Quality time with your people. I'm not going to say fans because I don't like using that word fans. Okay, I don't have fans. All right? I just got family who, who, who watch my stuff and they'll come to my church. People will come from out of town and just to come watch me play at my church. I don't tell them to do that. A lot of times they just pop up. Well, if they're going to come that far, or oh, we're spending some time together. We're going out. We're going to go to Applebee's or McDonald's, depending on what your pockets say. <laughs> we going to do something together because you are important to me to take out that time. Musicians, stop being selfish. Stop being so into yourself. Stop acting like Donald Trump. Who, who, who always got to have your name in something. Do you not know that the White House, when they have meetings with this man, they literally, they can't get him to read no policy. They can't get him to read the rules and regulations. They can't get him to read and pay no attention to the daily briefings. They can't. So you know what they got to do? This is for real, y'all. I heard this on the news. They got to literally put his name in uh, into the paragraphs. Yes, they do. They got to put Donald Trump's name in the paragraphs in the briefings. Because if they don't do that, he'll just scam it and he'll say the next. But when he see his name, he'll keep reading. And then they lead him in with his name again. And he'll keep reading. And they have to do this every day. This is the White House. Okay? Now, ain't that a shame? That's how some of you musicians are. And I'm not just saying you musicians. Some of you out there who do other little things. You're into yourself. You're naked. You, you're really as dung. You, to God, you filthy rags. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, I'm in trouble. Oh, I'm in trouble. Oh, what y'all saying? Are you coming to D.C.? Carol Lunkin, I sure am coming to D.C. I've been promising you to come to D.C. for a long time, and I think it's time. 2017, I need to be in D.C. I was trying to get there when Barack Obama was there, but oh, well. I'm going to get there now, and uh, there's, a, there's a Pharaoh that don't know Joseph. Yeah, I'm coming to D.C. You better be in town. Come on down to L.A. Pastor P.L. Howard, I'm coming to L.A. Never been. I've been to Sacramento. I've been to San Francisco. Ooh, man, I had some bubblegum shrimp down there in San Francisco. The Lord blessed. Ah, I just felt that, that shrimp it just going all up in me. Good stuff, okay? But I've never been to L.A. Now, that's a shame, and I got family down there. So, L.A., L.A., too much for the man. But I'm coming. I'm on my way down there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shantae, I don't believe he can read. I believe he has high-level autism. You could have something there. You could have something. I faked my way through college. Trust me. When I see what he's doing, I say, yeah, he using that tactic. I use that tactic to pass some of these tests. Oh, man, I know it uh, because he doesn't know it. 
and can't follow instructions if he tried. I know, Wanda. Come on, Wanda. You better stop talking about him. You're going to have to come down here and into my, I got to, um, I dig a hole in my backyard for those who talk like me. There's a few of us down there hiding. We got room for one more. Uh-huh. Come on, St Stephania Bush. I like that name. That is a great name, by the way. Okay. Y'all got any more questions? Let me know. Lady Michelle says after after every show, I thank everyone individual for supporting because I want them to know their input is valuable. Lady Michelle. And she's on every Monday, y'all. She do she do her warriors talk and she sure do. I know she do because I edit the show and she sure does, okay? And you got to do that. That is so vital. Those of you who got a bit, listen, let me say this and shut my big mouth because I got a big mouth. I got a big mouth. The Asians going to continue to get your business. Okay? Dry cleaners. Now, I hope this is not a racist thing that I've got brought up dry cleaning, but I'm trying to tell y'all the truth. I could not pull my clothes out of that dry cleaners. Why? Because that my from the time my father introduced me to the Asian cleaner, it's difficult for him to put his clothes into some of the black establishments. Why? For two reasons. Please hear me, all of it. All of what I'm getting ready to say. All right? My father is a supporter of black businesses. Trust me on that. All right? But I understood why he couldn't put his clothes into a black establishment for two reasons. Number one, the Asians took quality care of his suits. See, suits in the Jones family is important. There's no other way to dress. But like I'm right now, this is how we got our name. Suave, suave. Okay? We are suit people. All right? That's the way it is. And I'm not going to put my suit just anywhere. I'm going to put it to somebody who act like it's their suit too. That's the way they clean it. And those Asians take good care of our dry cleaning. And if we left something in the pockets, he would tell me about stuff where he had left money in the pockets. And when he went back to pick up his suit or the Asian woman, the proprietor, would call my dad and says, you left $50 in your coat. Hello? He like, there's no way I'm gonna take my clothes out of that cleaners. They 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 call me when I leave valuables in there and say, come get your fifty dollars. I know it's you, Mr. Jones. Uh-huh. That's the that's number one, why he keep going back. And number two, they treat him like family. Uh, did you hear me? When you walk into the Asian store, the Asian is like, hey, Mr. Jones. How you doing? I say fine. How you? How was Rebecca? How do you remember my daughter's name? How's Walter Jr.? Walter Jr. is fine. Is she graduate yet? Okay. Well, we give you special for graduation. Look, look at this. Because I'm telling you, they don't need a whole lot of customers because they take these little customers that they have and they, they study that family. They study, study, find out where they live. They know the stats and everything because they want to keep those customers. And so that customer becomes family. But when I take my clothes over to the African American store, the clerk on the other side was not properly trained on customer service. So she already mad. All right. I went to uh, a Dunkin' Donuts, okay? Black folk was working back there. And it was about 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Return clients. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, Shante. I went, I, I said, give me a number seven. And this black dude looked at me and said, you, you really want me to make this sandwich? He said, excuse me? He said, I've been here since 3 this morning. He said, you really want me to go back there? Don't you want something else on there? I said, mother. <clears throat> I said, brother, are you trying to tell me you don't want to make this sandwich for me? Because you've been here all day. And I'm asking you for number seven. Okay. I brother, where's your manager? I mean, I... Your manager was nice enough to give you a job. 
to work here, to make him money so that you can make money and you don't want to go back then. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm trying to tell y'all something. So the dry cleaners treated me the same way. Here's my suit. Uh, how many you got, sir? I, what do you mean how many? Excuse me? I, I, can you count how many? Put them on the counter, please. You might want to lower your tone. When I put my clothes up there, it ain't, but it's, it's five suits. You got five suits? Yeah, five suits. Okay, cool. Well, can you go in the pockets and make sure there ain't nothing in there because we don't return nothing. Excuse me? Who? Who the heck? Who? What is, where am I? You, are you mad at me? You having a bad, I'm getting ready to give you my business and you mad at me for giving you my clothes? No, I'm, I'm not putting my clothes in here. Because when I would put my clothes in there, it would come out. First of all, you think because you, you, you slice what the, the price is lower. See, the Asian cleaners cost high because they give me quality care. You cost maybe a dollar less. But I'm now I got to buy a new suit because once you throw my stuff in there and don't watch it, don't take care of it after it come out of it. It's like washing clothes in your washing machine and then forgetting it, it's in there. Okay? So you come back the next day and say, Mm. Now you want to take the, the clothes out of the washing machine. You know what it smells like, right? What do clothes that have been left in the washing machine for a day or two smell like? Anybody? Can I get a volunteer? Can you tell me what it smell like? Okay. And then, you, then you're going to try to put that thing in the dryer and try to cover up the smell with one of those those uh those uh, fragrance of cloth whatever you go what do you call those things you put really to try to hide the smell well that's the what they do the they treated my suits and just threw it in there and forgot it then when the fabric softeners try to okay so I get my suits back and all of the insides is out Okay, it's like they went in there and started cutting the seam, the cutting, the cutting the fat, and all of my insides are out. Okay, I get my suits, and they like this. One, one, one is like that, and the other one like this. So this is the way my suits are, out of the, out of the black cleaners. And then you want me to pay you, and you wonder why I'm not, why I'm not shopping in here no more. Look at this. So you, 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 it cost me a dollar less. Okay. So I got you got me in there because I want to save some money. But look now, now this suit cost me three hundred dollars. Okay, so now I got to go and buy. It's gonna cost me three hundred dollars because I saved a dollar. No, no, I'm going to the high cost Asian who gonna take good care of my suit and call me Mr. Jones and ask me how my daughter's doing. And if I leave $100 in my coat by mistake, they're going to call me and say, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, please. Mr. Jones. Mr. Waldo Jones. What? You got money. Come here now. We close. Okay? <laughs> Is that racist? <laughs> I'm trying to tell y'all, that's the way it's going to be. So, black folks, stop bragging. Stop bragging. Sir, you, you took a turn. It, it, <laughs> Diaz was telling me to shut up. All right, I'm going to shut it down. I got excited because, you know, when I get into my skits, I don't know how to uh, skedaddle. Okay? Uh, that's terrible. Hope that is not the norm in Chicago. Charles, see, Diaz, I'll be trying to shut it down, but, but, but this Shantae chick be speaking wisdom and I can't shut it up. I'm trying to tell you this, Shante, this happens in many of your major cities, okay? Not just Chicago. Many of these black cleaners, uh, they know good. I just don't understand how could they, not all of them, but quite a few of them that I've shopped in, I, I'm, I'm tired of my, coming out like this. I just don't do it. So I found a couple of black places where it costs a little high because they're downtown, it cost me a little high, but because they're downtown, they know white folks got clothes in there, and they got to act right. All right?
Yep. Nope. That's not a racist. That's a good. That's good business. All right. <laughs> All right. They're telling me to shut this down. Okay. Fifty nine minutes. My show is one hour, everybody, so I just made it. God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for everything you've done in our lives. God, help us, help us, help us. We need to be more humble. We need to stand before you with a contrite heart. We need to be broken. Break us. Mold us. Make us again. Take our hearts and massage it, God, and give us a spiritual overhaul. Help us, God, to be a little more humble before you and before the people. Study to show ourselves approval, not just for you, but for the people out there. All right? So that they can see us and see the God in us and worship you and not worship us. Help us to get on our knees a little bit more. Study the word of God. Go out there and win those who are lost. We thank you, God. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for the word of God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, all right, y'all saying in Jesus' name like y'all want me to stop. All right, then I'm going to stop because, you know, uh, I, I'm a Pentecostal man, and I could close at least five times And as I close. Good night to you. See you here again tomorrow, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about something a little more pressing on my heart. Ooh, we got some hot shows this week. You don't want to go nowhere. Hit the share button if you're on YouTube. Hit that thumbs up if you can. And hit the subscribe button. And we're going to be doing this again tomorrow. Good night, y'all. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.